Hi, it's Dwyer. Always, 1776.com, a free site. Also, money1776.com, a free site. Today is April 29th, 2024. Let's talk about money, but first understand that nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. Everyone listening to this video should consult with their own financial advisors and do their own due diligence. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me also point out too that simply because I name a company or an ETF in this video doesn't mean that I own it. It just means that it's on my radar. I'm monitoring the situation. Uh, I might be considering it. I might later pursue it. Perhaps I own it now. So, with that in mind, let's make a few points. First, I'm an Elon Musk fan. Understand, there's more to Elon Musk than Tesla, as anyone who uses X appreciates. Right? Well, one of his very successful companies is SpaceX. And I understand because it's a uh, private company, a lot of people who are not accredited investors believe that they can't have access to the company. Folks, you can, whether you're accredited or not. I'm going to name an ETF here. I encourage you to look it up. It's Destiny Tech 100. The ETF symbol is DXYZ. Again, that's DXYZ. Understand that this ETF has 34.6% of its holdings right now in SpaceX. In other words, if you believe SpaceX has huge upside, you know, don't fixate completely on Tesla. Look at what else Elon Musk is doing. If you're bullish on space, if you recognize the possibilities and realize that private space exploration has taken off, that SpaceX delivers a lot of satellites to our atmosphere, right? That things like the internet have already moved into space. If you're bullish on SpaceX, this is one way to get ownership exposure. Again, it's called Destiny Tech 100. The symbol is DXYZ. Just Google it. It's an ETF. By the way, in addition to the 34.6% of their holdings in SpaceX, they also have 9.7% of their holdings in Axiom Space. They have another 3.8% in OpenAI. Understand, I did not say Microsoft. I said OpenAI. That's direct exposure. Right here again, you don't have to be an accredited investor to have exposure to OpenAI. Now let's talk about the news in Tesla. It's big. Let's first talk about the problem Tesla's having. Now just imagine you were an early buyer of a Tesla. You paid early buyer prices. You paid an arm and a leg. Now, of course, Elon Musk, at a time where the company's having problems, right? They laid off 10% of their workforce. Elon Musk announces that he's going to be releasing cheaper Teslas. So, of course, your own Tesla, which was a luxury car brand, has been diluted somewhat in value. Right? Someone who wants a Tesla now doesn't have to pay the price you paid. Let's talk about the bigger problem. Not only has the price of incumbent Teslas dropped somewhat, but just understand the resale market is going to have a bad surprise for sellers who are not prepared for it or buyers who don't know what they're doing. These electric vehicles, many of them are going to require 
new batteries. Folks, the new batteries cost thousands of dollars. In other words, if I'm a seller of my Tesla, given that, you know, these EV batteries aren't perfect, right? In cold weather, the performance drops. Do some research. Given that Toyota, according to reports, is a year or two away from full development of a solid state battery that will have certain innovations that might change the battery market, right? Just understand that older Tesla that you have, where the battery isn't holding the charge as well as it once did. If you sell that car, the buyer might find out that they need a new battery and it might cost them four or $5,000. Right, folks, that's an unpleasant surprise if you've bought the Tesla and you're happy with the price you paid and then you find out that you need to pay a little bit more. Right? Understand, too, the problem is you're going to have newer Tesla models. Everyone likes the new toy over the old toy. Right? And, of course, the new toy is going to, you know, highlight the new technology, which you can download to the older Teslas. But let's just say, if you're a legacy Tesla owner, newer buyers can buy new cars with new batteries for cheaper than the price you paid back in the day. Well, Tesla got some great news recently, and it's groundbreaking news. Elon Musk went to China understand the EV market is vibrant in China. You have many Chinese EV companies. China, according to reports, is exporting EVs to places like Vietnam, right? China is a EV manufacturing hub. Now, apparently, according to reports, and this is all recent news, we'll see how it lands a few days from now. But China has indicated to Tesla that it's going to grant Tesla's application to have full self-driving vehicles in China. Right now, here in the United States, we've seen countless videos of Tesla drivers claiming that their Tesla ran a stop sign, that their Tesla didn't quite navigate that turn properly. Right? We're talking about the full self-driving feature of the Tesla. Right? We're hearing different stories about how Tesla's technology isn't quite where Waymo's technology is. Right? Google's self-driving arm. Right? People are questioning Tesla here in the U.S. Uh, of course, understand. One accident is too many especially if it's your family member in the car, right? So here in the United States, there's some hesitation toward giving Tesla the green light for full self-driving. Apparently, Tesla has cleared that hurdle in China. Let's be clear here, too. China has many more people than the United States, more than twice the number of people than the United States, right? Huge market. But of course, China required Tesla to partner with Baidu. That's a company you need to know. Understand, Baidu has been testing autonomous vehicles here in the Bay Area in places like Mountain View, California, right? Santa Clara, California. Mountain View might sound familiar because that's where Google is located, right? So Baidu already is one of the foremost companies in autonomous driving. They now are working with Tesla. Tesla agreed to work with them to get the Chinese license. This is huge news, right? So just understand, Tesla is going through some changes, right? Tesla now is going to focus uh, it's full self-driving technology on China. They're further along in China in terms of 
regulatory oversight and acceptance than they are here in the United States. So we will see what happens. Let me just say this though, right? Just to understand that the technology is moving so fast that the technology is ahead of the public acceptance, right? I could hear that friends were able to fly in pilotless planes and land safely. That doesn't mean I'm going to get in a pilotless plane, right? I believe the problem with autonomous driving are people from my generation who simply feel that the idea is too high risk, right? Sure, maybe it's possible. Maybe an autonomous driving Tesla drives better than the average driver. Right, but there's something reassuring about knowing that there's a human behind the wheel making decisions and constantly monitoring the road. Let me point out too, that just like I wouldn't get in a plane that is pilotless, well, folks, I wouldn't get in a Tesla that's pilotless or driverless. And keep in mind, it's the same math. I only have one life to give. The same way I wouldn't hop in a pilotless plane, I'm not going to hop in a driverless Tesla. I see all these investment gurus here online talking about robo-taxis. In China, perhaps they're willing to take more risks than we are here in the United States. Right? But I'm just telling you here in the United States... Right? And I understand they had autonomous vehicles in very hard to drive cities like San Francisco. Folks, that did not work out well. Please Google that story. Google what happened to some of the cars. Google the protesters that came out of nowhere because, of course, these driverless cars represented, you know, some movement toward the matrix that a lot of people felt offended by. Right, so I believe that the technology is ahead of the people. Right, and I believe the people are going to look at that technology and they're going to say, hey, this is a step too far. I'm not going to take my infant in a car in downtown San Francisco that does not have a driver. Right, let's just figure it out. Right. Let me also say, too, that the competition in the space is furious. Right. Please don't equate all EVs with Tesla. You have many companies. I'm curious to see what happens in China. Companies like Li Auto, LI, publicly traded here in the United States. Right. You have many EV companies, NIO, in China. And just understand, once you hear that Tesla has a partner, that tells me that the intellectual property is going to be shared with others. Right? The technology is here now. Right? I can tell you Baidu has been, you know, authorized uh, by the state of California to run tests for at least a year. Right. One of the problems Tesla is going to have is that the idea of self-driving isn't unique to Tesla. Right. Waymo is well funded. They have a self-driving unit that has been clocking a lot of miles in the state of Arizona. So let's see what happens let me just say, though, this is a big step forward for Tesla. Let me also say that if autonomous driving doesn't lead to a lot of accidents or a lot of unseen complications in China, it might help Tesla get regulatory authorization to roll it out here in the United States. I'll agree, younger people are more attuned to technology than older folks like me, 
right? But understand, I would pay more to have a driver in my taxi. Those are my thoughts today. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Short video today. Thanks for stopping by.